We still haven't got it spelled out from Eindhoven what exactly the injury is, but it looks like Serginho Dest is going to miss the Copa this summer. Huge implications for Greg Berhalter and the U.S. men's national team, and for us, frankly. Um, well, you know, we, we want to mourn the injury, probably an ACL injury or something like that. Uh, but it, as Vince said on the Monday review, move the drill. You know, everybody move to a different part of the field and uh, keep practicing. That's, Even that's if a bone sure. is sticking out. <laughs> that's for sure what the team needs to do, right? That's what the staff need to do. Uh, but yes, as fans, I definitely think we should be allowed to lament uh, because Serginho has just been so entertaining. Uh, mm. Aside aside from whatever the, the competitive difference will be and the, if the drop-off, and I think we can say that there will be some kind of a drop-off. I think there uh, is. Yeah. The entertainment drop-off is going to be substantial. Mm. Yeah. I mean, that's that's something to lament for sure. We got to figure out how to field the best possible 11 in his absence. And so that's what this episode is mostly going to be about. Um why don't you why don't you kick us off, Dr. Velasquez? <laughs> well, it, it feels like, you know, and, and people have been talking about this since as soon as we found out that he was very cryptically found out that he was going to be injured for a long spell. Uh it seems like there's basically two approaches, right? You you can go like for like uh, where you can sort of just plug in our next best right back, where best could mean like best overall available right back or best surge analog. Um, or you can or you can sort of fudge it, uh, and you can just get our next best player into the 11. Uh, and I think that we can, again, confidently say that our next best player is not Joe Scally uh, mm-hmm. or any of the other right backs in the pool. So that would obviously mean playing somebody nominally out of position at right back, and that's been what a ton of people have floated um, in, in large part because Joe Scally has never been that sexy of an option. And his last few performances with the national team have sort of, uh, he sort of doubled down on that non-sexiness. <laughs> He's gone to the mat to <laughs> prove his lack of soccer sex appeal. <laughs> um, but you're, I think, but you know, before we get into that a little bit, you're, you're, you want to defend him a little bit though, right? Like he... I thought I saw you say something earlier today about how had we not given up that goal against Jamaica in the first 30 seconds, nobody would have had a problem with Scally. And yeah. I mean, Scally, I, I would argue that that goal wasn't even really Scally's fault. But. No, it's not his fault. And, and you know, I think what people rightfully were also getting frustrated with wasn't just like the fact that he got dunked on for the goal, uh, which, you know, we kind of dissected. And sometimes players get dunked on through no fault of their own. <laughs> in fact, if you're uh, outnumbered at the point of attack. Um, right. but it was, it, it was also, uh, his involvement in our attempts to chase a goal down. And I think, uh, the same sort of caveat applies. If we're not down a goal 30 seconds in, no one is nearly as frustrated with, with the inep- ineptitude, ineffectiveness, uh, yeah, of Joe Scally, Joe Scally being, uh, uh, high up the field as we keep struggling to chase this goal. Um, if, if it's zero, zero, like in most universes, that game's going to be 30 seconds in. Um, most of the time in that kind of a game against that depleted Jamaica side, we get our goal in the run in the course of play, even even based on some of the attacks we you know got in that game when we weren't playing particularly well. Um, and Joe Scally's just a nothing player, and I think that's that's again effectively what he is. He's sort of a nothing player that you can plug in as if you need to, uh, and hope that he just doesn't do anything to cost you. And and that's just sort of. The opposite of Serge, who is definitely not a nothing player and who will like actually uh, like make you laugh several times in any given match, even if even if that doesn't always lead to a goal on the board, uh, you sure do feel like it could. Yeah, and it and sometimes it does lead to goals. It it often leads to us, you know, sort of tilting the field in possession. We're able to we're able to work the ball up that right side, often in very aesthetically pleasing ways, and. Um, I think there there's a substantive. I think you probably agree, but there's a substantive loss there too. I mean, he he um I don't know if he's our most important player in possession, but he's he's up there, top top 3 or 4 probably, you know, and the in the way the game is played right now, the wide the wide fullbacks get a lot of touches and uh you want somebody back there who can who can sort of move things forward. 
I mean, I've got like images of FB ref charts of ball progression, like just like <laughs> careening around in my head. But I, I think I can safely say that Dest is, uh, you know, it's really important what he does for our team in that way. It is. And, and the other thing to keep in mind too is, uh, and we'll kind of touch on, it, I think as we close, but uh, it'll, it'll also be very like situationally important, right? Dest will be more important against certain teams than he would be against others, uh, or he'll be important in different ways. Um, and, and it's, it's, again, it's one of those things where Joe can't really replace Dest in any of the ways that Dest is important, whether it's building out of the back under pressure or whether it's, uh, trying to get really creative with cute stuff at the edge of the opponent's box as we try to cut open a resolute low block. Right. So, so the, the first approach, the sort of like for like, um, I mean, like for like maybe isn't how I would describe it. It's just like use our next best right back. Yeah. Um, Scally is probably choice number one. He would go in in possession. He would be, uh, you know, either part of that back three or part of a band of three in a two, three, five, three, two, five, two, three, five, kind of morphing back and forth between the two. Um, Jedi, Jedi would go high up left in possession to join that band of five. And then we go with Pulisic in the left half space, way a wide right. West probably in the right half space, um, maybe Geo. I mean, Geo. This is another thing: is Geo was all over the place in the Mexico game, dropping really deep to get uh, to get on the ball. So I'm not sure exactly how this all fits together, but this is basically what we did against Mexico. Dest was back a lot in that game. You know, he was part of the build out a lot. Um, at least that's how we started the game. So that's Scali is, I guess, option number one in that scenario. Yeah, he's it's the easiest plug, right? And and we did this against Jamaica. Uh Scally just starts for the suspended dust. And and again, you saw you saw that it's not he's he's not totally uh, a catastrophe in there. You know, he's not he's just he's not as good as Serginho. So when Way is dropping back for uh extended spells and Scally has replaced him in, in in the attacking front, uh you are just you I mean, you know you're not gonna get that much out of him. Uh and you and we didn't. And so the the hope is if we do go this route with Scally in the group stage, um, that we maybe stress like, hey, you when you can stay back and let Timmy stay up there, and, and maybe more more importantly, like tell Timmy like, hey, don't just drop back because right. you do that when Serge is on there. Like we need you up there rather than Joe as often as possible. Well, do do any of the other sort of you know plug and play right backs intrigue you? Dewan Jones, um, Brian Reynolds, like maybe Dewan. I've, I've been intrigued by Dewan Jones, but I don't think he's going to be. I don't think he's going to be some uh, attacking dynamo. You know, again, the way Serge is. So, uh, to be honest, no. Like uh, the one who, the one who, I, like I wonder if Berhalter will resort back to would be DeAndre Yedlin, who hasn't been in camp since Berhalter's taken back over, uh, but who Berhalter I think appreciates for his his experience. And who also has a close relationship with Tim Weah. They're the they're the Mountain Boys. Oh yeah, there's a, there's definitely a chemistry shout there. Uh, frankly, though, I think Yedlin is like much worse at at being like a possession hub. Even if that's all he is, I think he's worse at that than Scally. So I agree. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> I think we'd be losing even more. He might be able to get out and run around the edge more. Uh, but I, I I mean, it would basically just be a vibes pick. If that's the way yeah. to go. Yeah. Uh, Brian Reynolds was um, last played in the shirt for the U23s against France, um, March 25th. That was a 2-2 draw. He had a he had a couple nice crosses from wide. Um, I tried to catch up on him a little bit at Westerlo. I uh, he seems like he's doing all right. I mean, I don't I don't see like a great number of oopsies or lost assignments. Um, which I think has always been the knock on him. He definitely has the, he definitely has a lot of tools that are useful. Like he can whip a ball in. He's he can beat people one v one on the dribble. Like in the attack, he's he 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 brings some stuff. But uh, I don't know. I don't know if he. I don't know where Berhalter stands on him. And maybe he's he's been sort of you know slotted for the Olympics, and that's it. That's what I'd say. It comes down to if it's not Scally and it's not Yedlin, who Berhalter has also got a great deal of. Uh, history with with the national team. I just I don't see us ahead of this huge tournament 
just testing out Brian Reynolds with the senior team. Like, I think that, I think that would actually be like nuts. <laughs> so, uh, Dewan Jones, who Burl has had in a few camps, but has never really seemed to, to get across the line. Like same thing. I just don't think there's any way that Greg Burhalter would pick up one of those guys to jump Joe Scally just because Scally kind of struggled a little bit or doesn't offer a ton. I think, I think all that's really like a huge reach more, more so than the cute stuff we're going to get into next. Yeah. Well, I'm a, I'm going to be a proponent of the cute stuff, I think. Um, and, uh, there's a lot of it to, <laughs> there's a lot of it to discuss. <laughs> How many caps? Oh, B- Reynolds has six caps for the, wait, does he? Probably he played in the gold cup, right? And he had that outrageous goal, didn't he? Didn't he have an outrageous banger? Um, yes, he did have, a, he did have a banger. I'm, I'm double checking if he has six caps though. I don't think that's quite true. Uh, three caps. Two caps. Number keeps getting smaller. Two caps. I'm sorry. I'm I'm gonna mark it. He has way more than two caps. He has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven caps, it looks like, according to transfer market. Um yeah, but I but I do I think I agree with you. It'd be it'd be crazy to have him jump Scally and be like the, you know, unless unless Burhalter and Co are seeing some stuff in the in the film that is really like compelling to them, which is possible. Yeah. For, again, for for me, I don't really see it. I feel like sit, you send Reynolds to the Olympics, let him uh, let him mature a little bit over there, or let him get more time in system if you want to mm-hmm. consider it like that. Uh, because again, Joe Scally is not he's not an amateur here. He's just, he's played a little bit he's played at a high level for a while uh, for a long time of, yeah 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 how high of a level he has performed in that high level uh certainly debatable but uh he's not gonna be he's not gonna be like stunned by any of the stuff that's going on i don't think i know we kind of have some jokes about his <laughs> his persona and his tendency to call things very complicated <laughs> yeah but, but i i think again i think you can put him into a game and and mostly trust him. This is where I point out that I also had a had to call him out for the Trinidad. I don't know if you want to call it a blunder, but that's where that's where I kind of started to be like, Joe, buddy, you're supposed to not be a guy who does this. And that's on their the corner kick uh, that we had against Trinidad down in Trinidad after the Dest fiasco, um, where Joe Scally just gets absolutely pantsed and Trinidad's racing back at us. Uh, it was and- that one v one chance that the that the attacker kind of scuffed. Yeah, the, the guy hits it. The field actually comes to our rescue for all the talk we do about how we don't like playing on those fields. The field slowed down the 1v1 attacker where he had to wait for the ball to stop bobbling. Um, but it was just a ba- it's a super basic play. Uh, I think Jedi goes up for a, a header. Jedi is sort of the, the first line of confrontation to deny a counter, and Joe Scally's a deep safety. Yep. And Jedi loses the first, sort of just loses the header, or just contests it poorly, weakly. Je- Jedi gets the little brother a little bit. Yeah. Um, which he, he can kind of afford. I mean, we could take a foul. We could do a lot of things. But in any event, uh, the guy who wins the header is now sort of just on the other side of Jedi racing upfield. And he has an attacker with him that's that's right at the midfield line with Scally. And Scally, for whatever reason, just like cheats to the side. He's already on the sideline side of the uh, the free runner. And he cheats even more to the sideline. Like he's just running a- away from the middle of the field. And Trinidad just plays the ball anywhere over the top. And uh scally has totally eliminated eliminated. yeah he's eliminated himself giving himself a horrible angle uh to pursue and it's just like amateurs that was like an amateur moment from him uh that's where i was like joe like figure this out where we want you to be a guy we can trust this is not how you how you get gain trust well things feel complicated when you're coming off 14 straight hours of Fortnite. you know (laughs) stuff 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 seems harder um so there we go. That's sort of the Joe. That's basically the whole Joe Scally picture in my mind. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, should we talk about just real quick about the way Reyna dropped in against Mexico and what it means for this whole, you know, shape and the right back? I know we discussed it in the game, in the recap of that Mexico game, but if that's going to be repeated where, um, you know, Reyna is dropping in, mostly he was dropping in on the left side, it felt like, and picking up the ball directly from Tim Ream. What are the implications of that for 
uh, replacing Dest, you know? Yeah. So if, if he's doing that, then that right. I mean, when it was, I would say that one of the reasons that we did that a ton against Mexico on the left side is because Serginio Dest is on the right side. Uh, if it's not Serginio Dest, I don't think we would see that heavily shaded of a of a uh, asymmetry in that midfielder dropping back. We've always brought that midfielder back since since the uh, first game after the pandemic when we played MMA for the first time. Uh-huh. Uh, we've been doing that. We've been dropping that midfielder back to the side of the two center backs. Um, in in that first game back, it was Weston McKenney dropping on the left side, uh, not Tyler Adams, which I think everyone kind of assumed would be the guy who would do that. It was, it was McKenney to be more of that deep line distributor. So um, I could totally see us doing that. Um, in this game, I think we, in, in our Copa with whoever ends up uh, being in the midfield, even if it is Scally uh, as a right back. And I think that would just push Scally higher up the field in the build out. Okay. Which I don't know that we really want, right? Um, it's not my favorite. No. I don't think it'll be Geo as much, to be honest, in the Copa. I think it'll be less Geo and more probably Wes. Yeah. Or Moose. Well, um, I want to do a quick plug for the John O'Brien interview because that, that dropped last week. And he said he would have loved to play the inverted fullback role. <laughs> like he, he, uh, he likes that, but we can't pull it. We can't pull him out of retirement. He's getting a little too old. Um, but anyway, check that out on the feed if you haven't already. Um, let's get into the, the second category of options. What are you calling it? What's the, what's the name of the category? We're just we're fudging it. We're fudging a little. Yeah, you just got to fudge that right back spot. Just a, a category that's brimming with intrigue, I would say. Um, I was I was all for fudging it in the Nations League, right? Even before the the game, when we knew we obviously knew Des was suspended, we were I think we were a heavily fudgified podcast. Uh, mm. But that was I mean I'm just gonna hedge. That was for a one off game where we knew Des was coming back in the next game, and it was against a depleted Jamaica who we knew uh, was not going to offer a ton running back at us. And we know from playing them in the past, they're not some possession-heavy side that's going to force us into a low block for extended times. So it's just like we can get through a game with what I wanted to see was Tim Way at right back. Yeah. And I I, th- I think that's still sort of option number one in the fudging it category. Way at right back, up in the front five in possession. Maybe Haji right as the touchline hugging left winger Pulisic as maybe the nominal right wing but in the right half space and then Gio in the other half space Jedi stays back in possession in this scenario um it, so so again you get back to instead of introducing Joe Scally on the field you're putting Haji Wright on the field and and do you think that's a net gain uh what are the trade-offs and uh I should also say if you don't want it to be Haji Wright as your next man up it could easily be the current man of this real time recording, which would be Malik Tillman, uh, who has an assist and two goals in the first 15 minutes of PSV's game. So you have these sexier options. I think it's clear to say, uh, and you just got to, you just, are you willing to fudge? So then you would, I guess Tillman could be, you could say he's the right winger, but he plays in the right half space. Then Pulisic on the left wing. Yeah. Um, Yeah. I mean, there's so many nice ways to do it, honestly. It feel this is, you know, you, I, I, don't, I would have probably balked at doing an episode like this in the past when it felt like all the options were sad. But <laughs> um, there's so I many bet, fun options here, you know? Bells, I bet some longtime listeners are going to call out our, as soon as Berhalter was hired, we were trying to figure out uh, four, two, three ones, and we ran through all of the uh, number 10 options we had. And I think, I think we were it? talking about Kellen Acosta as the number ten. Uh, there were some sad, there were some the sad grim catalogs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like that either. I mean, right? Uh, didn't I? Don't think played very well as the striker for the U.S. in in Dallas against Mexico, but he, um, in a little bit less of a focal role, I think he he would do better. He would do better. That's his role for for Coventry, and he's. Uh, He's having a great season, obviously. Yeah, he's coming off a really uh, exciting performance against Manchester United in that mm-hmm. FA Cup semifinal off that left wing. So, uh, you know, again, that is for sure going to get the, the masses more excited, uh, I think, for like, oh, yeah, let's add another exciting player. Um, 
and then Tim Weah, Tim Weah as a as a wide, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know if he was technically a wing back or a fullback in that Coppa Italia semifinal, but he comes off the bench and gets a beautiful assist for the game winner uh, for Juventus. So he's like, I know he's not having the best season. I I know you looked into it a little bit, right? How's so he? Went, how's his well, defending? What I wanted to go back to was like the first time he got just tossed into this role without a ton of reps. Uh, so I went back to Lille. Uh, right before the World Cup. It was November of 2022, where it's like, oh, Tim Wayne playing right back today. Yeah. And he he was a right back in a back four for Lille uh, on several occasions. And he, he also basically looks fine. He looks better uh, when it's possession heavy, when your team's got the ball a lot, and he can move farther up the field like, comfortably without, without a lot of risk. Um, and I think that's what we'd be hoping. Those are the situations we'd probably hope to do it. And that's, that's again, going to be the key is, what situations does it make sense? What opponents does it make sense? Uh, if any. Well, I, I can't wait to hear you break that down for us at the end of the episode. <laughs> okay, option number two on the under the fudging it category is put Wes at right back. And I think there's something to that really recommends this option because if we're gonna, if we're looking for a player who is a like for like replacement for Dest, like a true similar type of player. Wes is probably the one. He's the player most likely to cook from back there, to combine, to beat a, a couple guys on the dribble. He's not exactly, you know, he's not exactly the same player as Des, but he's he's closer to it than I think Weya is. What Weya is, and um, and then we would have, so he would he would play there for Scally. Then we'd have Eunice and either you know Johnny or Tyler, probably depending on Tyler Adams' health, uh, in that midfield with uh, G in the sort of the, the two above the three and then we'd have um you know geo in the in that band of five as a as a as a nominal midfielder um i could really see wes sort of protagonizing from that right back spot in the way that Des does and i i think i like it Maybe well you know who the, else, go ahead you know who else likes it is greg berhalter who did that at halftime of the jamaica game where right scally scally stayed stayed uh on the bench to come out uh to start the second half and it was Weston McKenney as our right back. Um, and, and again, it's it's a really, you can kind of blend the distinction here between Weah there and Wes there. If Weah is playing right back in possession, he's not going to do what Serge did. He's going to do what Weah did. Like he'll just do the same, he would just do the same thing he does now for us in possession. Um, whereas if you say Wes is the uh, right back and in, in the block, he plays the right back. He would basically do more of what the Serge stuff was, uh, where sometimes he will, go be the attacker on Wea's side and Wea will drop back. And sometimes he will just sit in midfield the way Serge could and the way Wes is obviously very comfortable doing. Right. So I think you're totally right that as an actual Serge analog, Wes would be that guy. And again, that's that's the route Burhalter went when we were chasing a goal and he wasn't happy with uh, what we were getting from Scally there. Was it, it wasn't exactly a smashing success in the second half of that Jamaican. I mean, we didn't get, we didn't score until the 90. <laughs> fifth minute or whatever it was on a own goal but yeah in the last the last like 18 minutes of that regulation we basically stopped playing any kind of soccer that we're used to and we we're just lumping it up at haji and surreal experience yeah <laughs> just lumping it up at our two stress haji and peppy up in the box <laughs> and then eventually also uh one of our center backs chris richards heading up right. there to be our third striker <laughs> right right and none of it really worked until we got the own goal. And then in the, in the extra time, we we uh, turned the screw, so it all turned out well. But um, was it? Did Adams come on at halftime in that game too? No, Adams I think came on in like the sixtieth. You want me to okay. confirm it? I feel like he came on in the. the you might be right. Maybe he did come on, but he uh, he came on and then came back off. Right? He got his he got his forty minute uh, run out and then had to come back off. Okay, so he. Yeah, I wonder if he... did he just play the entire second half? No, I want to say. Let me find it. He came on in the sixth. So Adams came on in the sixty third and departed in the hundredth. So he had a he had a forty minute uh, clock running. I think. Okay. Might have been forty five. I don't know. I don't know how the uh, trainers count extra time. They're like, no, 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 extra time doesn't actually add on to this minute. Well, surely they surely they count it. They. <laughs> I mean, otherwise it'd be silly. Um, okay, so that's that's options one and two, Wea uh, and Wes. I, I feel like I'd be happy 
with either one, you know, at least going into it. I mean, retrospectively afterwards, I would be full of criticism if it didn't work, but, <laughs> but, uh, at least going into it, I think I, I could see the rationale for either one. The other, another, another option is, uh, put Tyler Adams at right back. If he's healthy, obviously this depends on him being healthy. Um, he's missed five straight games, I think with back issues. Terrifying, uh, but, by the way, like I, any kind of back issue for me is terrifying because I feel like I don't know how much science has, has advanced on back injuries, but I feel like to me, they always carry this air of mystery where like no one really knows. They just go, I don't know. You just got to heat it. I don't know if they're still doing that. <laughs> Make it really I mean, cold. To, Make it really hot. Heat it. <laughs> yeah. let's, let's electrocute you for a little bit. Uh, I'm so scared of the back injury. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot that science hasn't quite figured out yet. <laughs> Come on, science. Uh, Adams. So if you put Adams back there, you know, you get, um, somebody who's comfortable as a midfielder so he can, he can help with the build out. I don't think you get as much progression from him as you get from Dest. This is a, this is a topic of great controversy right now in the scuffed podcast discord, but um, I think you're, I, I think you're switching. I think there's some controversy about Adam's ability to progress. I don't think anyone is saying Adam's is, going to progress just as well as Serginio Dest. I think it's saying it with Dest out of the picture and these are all your options. Is Adams considerably worse at progressing the ball than Joe Scally? Is he the same? Is he worse at it than Wes? Like, I, th I feel like that's kind of the, the, that's the question. question. So what do you think? Is he, is Adams the same as Scally? Is he better than Scally? Uh, I'd say I, he's probably a little better than Scally at progressing the ball. Uh, I don't know. I'm not, for me right now, I'm not in, like impressed enough with Adams' ability to progress from that particular spot uh, to to consider it like useful to have him step into Joe Scally's spot. Because then, like if you think about it, Adams, is if, he, if we get him back, he's coming back from injury. Uh, I don't know how much we'll get to use him, but you would be using his minutes in a spot that isn't his best spot and mm -hmm. in a spot that we could get those minutes from Joe Scally. So if, if Adams isn't some attacking dynamo the way Wes or Wea is, if you think of him that way, uh, like what what's the gain? You know, you're okay. taking Adams out of the midfield, or at least you're reducing the number of minutes you can use him in midfield to yeah. do what? So at, to be honest, Adams is like my least favorite solution to this. Okay. Big, I mean, just from a big picture standpoint. You've talked me out of it, and I'm ashamed that I even brought it up. <laughs> No, I mean that makes perfect sense. Why, why use his most likely very precious minutes on that when um, you have all these other options? What about Eunice? What about Eunice Musa? Um, There's he's going to play right back for isn't isn't there a word that he's going to play some right back this weekend? Yes, he's going to play some right back for AC Milan. Um, I mean he can progress the ball. He can he can progress the ball in a lot of different ways. Um, it's I don't funny, know. I don't hate it. Some of, some of it very much feels like FIFA fying things, uh, and some of it feels less like that. Even though maybe it's it's really all just the same. Uh, and it it kind of just gets back to like anybody can play fullback. It just depends how you ask them to play it. Like it's it's not that challenging. You just you're gonna have to play within your limits and with your tendencies. Well, meeting the basic requirements of the job is not that challenging. Right. I guess to agree with you on that, but like. But there's so much opportunity in that spot of the, on the field, and you're going to get different levels of output toward that optimal from different players. If that makes sense. Yeah. No. I mean, with Eunice, you you could you could either put Wes at right back and then put Musa on the field uh, in Wes's spot where he just vacated, uh, or you could I guess go the other route and it'd just be who you most comfortable with uh, defending. And again, this is, I feel like, going to lead us into uh, who are we going to be defending? Because that that matters. All right. What about Brendan Aronson at right back? <laughs> Thoughts? <laughs> are people tossing that one out there? <laughs> we joked about it on the Monday Review a little bit. Uh, but, um, yeah, let's do talk about. So one, three... one more note. One more note. Sorry. Yeah. Just because yeah, yeah. I almost slipped on it, too. Have you noticed that it is like I, you have to stop and think about it now when you say Eunice? Because because of uh, the issue yeah. that came up with with the other gentleman, yeah, uh, brother Yusuf, like I got to stop and think about it now. <laughs> it sounds sounds just close enough, and you're like, wait, you 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 Yusuf? No, no, that's yeah. the marsh. That's the marsh bit. No, I I 
I haven't tripped up on it yet, but I, I think it's going to eventually happen. So my, my kids have done this. My kids have done this to me with, uh, cause he, he's like four. He's just learning how to say words when he's singing. Uh, but I now have to stop and think about whether it's welcome to New York or welcome to you Nork. They both sound <laughs> like you Nork now sounds just close enough. And I'm like, wait, no, that's not, it can't be. It's not you Nork, New York. <laughs> So it can happen. They can put it in your brain and then it's just stuck there. Yeah. Shame on you, Jesse Marsh. Ah, and and my four-year-old child. Yeah. Well, okay. He gets a little bit of grace, I think. Um, all right. So we're playing Bolivia first in Dallas, then Panama in Atlanta, Uruguay in Kansas City. Those games are, I believe, the 23rd, the 27th, and July 1st. If not, um, it's like give or take a day on each one. Um by the way, we're going to have big parties, big scuffed parties in Atlanta and in Kansas City. So put them on your calendar. Come to the game. Come tailgate with us. We'll have a great time. But anyway, to the to the the substance here, how do you want to how do you want to approach Bolivia? What do, what do we know about Bolivia? What does that how does that dictate our 11? So none of these are amateur teams, right? We're not playing we're not playing Grenada in any of these games. Um we're better than Bolivia. Uh I think, you know, we've got a pretty good talent edge on Bolivia. And Bolivia are going to, I think, sit in a low block. Uh, so for me, like if you're dealing with a low block team that might try to hit you on the counter, your fullback's defensive abilities are not that, not as emphasized. Uh, because when Bolivia do attack, it's going to be like, okay, it'll be the two center backs who are staying home plus the defensive mid uh, who are going to blow most of this up. And the fullbacks are going to be trailing the play anyway. And by the time they get there, hopefully it's fizzled out. We just use them to, you know, reset the possession and start going start going back the other way. So I feel like for Bolivia, we could get away with certainly a cute fullback option. Okay. Do I have to do I have to weigh in? Do you if, if we're gonna do that, if that's who we're playing, do you have a do you have like a real preference where you're gonna pick one? I'm 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 open to change. You know, I don't have to be right about this, but I'm <laughs> but I uh but I feel most comfortable with Wes for that scenario at right back and then have Eunice in the midfield. I'll take it. And the the reason that like I'm, I'm, I'd be happy to have a cute option and with have that option be Wes would be uh way would starting position would be a little bit higher. So when we do win it, way is not like racing all the way back and then have to get back up field. It'd be like, he's already up there. We can just try to go and, and blitz behind him before they can get their shape. If, if we can catch him a couple of times. Yeah. So, but I'll say, I won't yeah. be like, I, if, if Joe Scally's a starter in this game, it won't be like, no, what are we doing? Because I feel like that's where a lot of people get to with, with some of these really marginal calls, uh, is that they, they'll talk about it as though it's some obviously boneheaded decision. And I just, we will probably be fine with Joe Scally against Bolivia. Yeah. 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 Fair enough. So, so Panama, we, we have a talent edge on them too, right? Yeah, town edge on Panama. But they're they're not gonna sit in a low block, or at least they haven't in basically any important game they've played of late. Like they didn't sit in a low block against us in qualifying, uh, much to their detriment. Um, they aren't sitting in low blocks in Nations League against uh Mexico. Uh, Mexico. Uh, highly highly entertaining game, much more even than the scoreline uh indicated. They had a lot of chances in that game. Yeah, they're they're kind of they're going to come out and like hit, they're going to set a high line and they're going to like come after you, uh, which uh, for me like that's where surge would be even more valuable, uh, or at least you know we, we talked about it. he's valuable in so many different ways. So against a Bolivian low block, he'd be very valuable up at the corner of Bolivia's box, uh, being able to cut in and play cute little combinations with Wea or Geo or whoever um, against a Panama he would be instrumental in exploiting their, their over pursuit, right? If they're going to come mm -hmm. up high, um, Scally might not be able to combine in the same way. You can put Scally in a cul-de-sac sooner than you can put Gio Reyna in a cul-de-sac. Uh, Sergi Serginio? Yes. Sorry. Yeah. So it sounds like in, uh, why would we, which of these scenarios does not require a cute option? I guess. I mean, basically Uruguay, right? Uruguay in the knockout for sure. In my mind. Uh, Uruguay, for as much as like Bielsa took over and you thought maybe it'd be all murder ball, like Uruguay play a ton of uh, patient possession soccer. Um, 
against sure. against a lot of teams. So, you know, you you watch them against Ivory Coast, or you watch them against Bolivia, where Bolivia sits in a low block. Um, those are two of their last few games. Um, like all of their shots will come off of minute, minute and a half, two minute possession spells where they just patiently work the ball around um, and then eventually uh, find a way into the box. So they're uh, not throwing everybody forward and pressing the hell out of everybody. Like, like I mean, think. they'll do that too. So, so when they're playing, I mean, they'll, they're, they will swarm up. Like if we have, when we're trying to build, they will definitely come and press us. Uh, but I guess I'm just saying like, you're going to have to defend a mix of options against Uruguay. They will be able to do anything uh, that you, that you set up for. So if you set up to sit in a mid, medium block and absorb, um, they'll, they'll hold the ball. Like they won't just uh, concede possession be like, no, come at us so we can counter you. They'll, they'll build out, they'll try to build through you. So I could see us sitting in a, uh, a mid block for long stretches of a game. And I feel like in that moment, I'm call me a, call me a coward, but I'm like, just take the right back, just play the right back back there. Let Wes be mm. a midfielder. Yeah. I mean that to me. So my thought on this is, is not really tactical, but it's just like when you play the best competition, then you need the best players out there, you know? Um, so the Uruguay game is the one that I've been thinking about. Like that, we definitely shouldn't start Scallion. You know, <laughs> I love that we're exactly <laughs> like we're opposite. coming out opposite ways. Yeah, but um, so that's where I would I would say like it's got to be either Wes or Wea at right back because a to sort of play out when they do try to press us and um and I don't know I don't know how much you lose. I mean, if Scally were this. I think I'm just stealing something you've said, but if Scally were just a totally locked down defender, it'd be more, I'd be more, I'd feel more complicated about it. But I don't know that you lose that much in terms of responsibility, you know, covering the back post, staying, uh, staying alert by going from, from Scally to Wea or Scally to McKenney, you know? So your guys is the one game where I'm like, definitely no Scally. <laughs> So the other thing that I'm, I'm I'm hopeful of is that we've taken care of business in games one and two. Uh, mm. We still will have more business to take care of because presumably winning the group uh, allows you to dodge Brazil in the first knockout game and get like Colombia, which neither of those are cakewalks, but you probably want to dodge Brazil. I mean, I feel like you can say that. I right? feel like that's that's a time honored truth. <laughs> so so the Uruguay game will have some stakes for both teams. Uh, so it'll be a good test, um, but it's not, it's not like all or nothing. So it's like whatever you choose between these three games over the course of all of these minutes, uh, you're going to learn from those. So when we do go into that knockout game, fingers crossed, we advance, uh, then you make, then you kind of make your new choice based on all that info that you've acquired. Okay. Fair enough. No, I mean, that makes sense. Like there's there's a little bit of wiggle room here in all these games because of the talent edge. Uh, let's hope. I mean, game state would also drive some of this, just like we saw against Jamaica. If we're losing in against Bolivia or Panama, you can I would I would put significant money on uh, losing after the 60th minute. Joe Scally's not on the field for us. Right. Yeah. Berhalter's bringing on uh, some some offensive firepower. Yeah, I think the other the you know one other thing that we really lose with surge which is all which is difficult to quantify is his um the way he demoralizes uh the opponent you know you it's i know this you don't you're not big on the sort of mystical side of things but but it does you know it takes a toll on a team when you get embarrassed a couple times and especially when you get embarrassed and maybe maybe no goal is scored but you clear it desperately it just goes right back to tim ream and then ream passes it over to serginio again it's like it uh, you start to squeeze the life out of the opponent a little bit, and so I think Wes, if we're lo if we're looking for an ex ex demoralization, like for like replacement, it's it's probably Wes again on that front. But that's just a side point. Yeah, I'll pi no, I'll piggyback on it. There's demoralization, and there's also a uh, provocation. Like you can you can mm -hmm. provoke people with gamesmanship, and you can provoke people by nutmegging them over and yeah. over. And <laughs> People don't like it. People don't like getting rinsed in highlight fashion. And uh, if we have the discipline, you know, when they come after us, uh, it's not retaliate. That can that can get some people sent off. Yeah. 
yeah, those those Uruguay players not gonna like it if they were to get <laughs> magged by Dest. Um, I think that covers it, doesn't it? Yes, I mean this is again this is a it's a hilariously like uh, magnified problem that everyone is just like, well, this is kind of the only thing to really dig in on. I mean, we could we could easily have been like should Johnny start. Uh, and maybe we will. Uh, well, maybe, we will. We will. We will. Yeah. yeah, that's the other big one. Johnny versus Tyler. Um, Paulo versus Sergeant. I mean, we got some. We got all these. Maybe, that, maybe that's what it'll be. Maybe we'll have a series of. Uh, Let's do it. Battles here. Going Let's into the do it. Why not? But um, somebody suggested we bring Bob Morocco on and do the Tyler versus uh, Johnny debate, and um, I'd be up for that. All right, Bob versus Two Feet. <laughs> Yeah, bring two feet on too. She left me on read. She left me on read. Uh, I think that's it. Uh, check out the Patreon. Uh, link is in the show notes. That's how we. That's how we do this. Is listener support. Thanks for listening. We'll see you.